Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Living Room Sports. Bob Pompiani and Rich Walsh. And tonight we welcome in two iconic hockey figures, two Stanley Cup champions from the Pittsburgh Penguins, Kevin Stevens and Rick Tockett. Gents, thanks for joining us. What have you been up to? Talk, start with you. Yeah, well, it's a little bit different. Uh, we're, you know, we're, well, you're allowed to be outside a little bit more. Um, so that, that's the good part, Bob. Uh, you know, you get to go for walks. And I bought a bike uh, about a month ago, so I do a lot of biking. Uh, you know, I'll grab the computer, do some uh, Zoom calls with our coaches, uh, some players sometimes keep busy. So, uh, you know, like already, like we're both routine guys. We need routine in our life. So I try to do something, you know, basically every day the same thing. So, um, but, you know, I'm itching to play. And, but when the world's safe, I think we'll be ready to go. Kevin, how about you? Where are you living? What are you doing? I am in Boston. And um, what am I doing? That's a good question. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing much. Because like I said, I think. In April, it only rained 19 out of 30 days, so it's you know a lot, a lot of outside time there. And then, uh, but it's you know it's it like like talks said, you try to stick with a routine. You try to get something where you you don't have to get up every day and say now what, right? That that's that's the hardest thing. It's you know now what are we gonna do? And you know you know you want to go do something and you can't do it, but but it's just it just you know it is what it is. We try to deal with a day at a time, right? It's just uh, hopefully you know we'll see a little life back in the next couple of weeks here. All right, let's go down memory lane a little bit. Rick, for you, you started out, surprisingly, for someone who has a 48-goal season in your pocket, as a sixth-round pick by Philadelphia. Was it more that they were intrigued by your ruggedness, like sort of the Broad Street bullies approach? Did they ever think you can become the player you became? Yeah, I mean, listen, when I, when I went over there at 19 years old, and uh, the team we had was a very tough team and just kind of fit in that situation. I, I played like that in junior, same way, you know, uh, you know, a lot of try to get some room out there and try to develop your skills. Um, and it kind of worked out. I mean, Philly was the perfect spot for me to start on my career. Kevin, one thing uh, I just found out, I didn't even realize you were drafted by the Kings, right? Yeah, I was I drafted by LA and um, I got traded in, you know, in college. You know, I was in college. I didn't even know I ever could play hockey. You know, it was one of those things. Like I got traded and it was like, you know, I think I found out three days later, I got traded to the Penguins. You know, it didn't happen. <laughs> I didn't find out right away. But it was, you know, that, it worked out great because um, coming into Pittsburgh, like when I did, we were all kind of came in at the same time. You know, we were young and uh, we had a core of guys. Mario was obviously, obviously there, but Craig was starting to build the team. And, you know, our team was, it was a great situation for me to go into. It was, uh, you know, a perfect place for me. And then, Talk, you uh, had a trade that shook up everything with the Penguins. Uh, right after they won a Stanley Cup, you ended up coming over here from Philadelphia. And I'm just curious... What was your take on that trade when it happened and just what it meant to you to be traded to a team that eventually won an, another cup and probably should have won another one after that? Yeah, listen, I, I loved Philly, but I wasn't too – I mean, I was, at, I was at that airport fairly early. I mean, you look at that team, the leadership of it, um, you, know, you know, the Kevin Stevens, the, the Ronnie Francis, obviously the big guy Lemieux and Alfie, all those guys. I was a Yager, a young Yager, uh, Joey Ma. I mean, I could go down a list of guys – you're basically going to an all-star team. So I was very lucky uh, to go to that team. You know, they got me a ring. Really, really excited. And I, and I love Pittsburgh. I mean, I've lived there 11 years of my life. So it was a great, it was a great thing for me. A year before Rick Tock had arrived, though, Kevin, you had one of the best guarantees I'll ever remember in sports. In the Eastern Conference Finals against Boston, yeah. you were down 2 nothing, And you said, uh-uh, we're not going to lose this series. That's a pretty uh, gutsy move. <laughs> for someone yeah, yeah. to make it that point. But tell us about what went into that and why were you so confident? What went into it was we're up – it was game two. We're up five to three. I think I took a penalty. They made it five four. Then someone else took – then they called another one. made it a five one. They tied it five five. Then I remember we went overtime. And Rosie Rosiska, I remember ch trying to chase him down. And the, puck, and the puck went over the line by that much. And the guy was in Boston, you know. I couldn't catch him. And I was so mad. I don't even really know what I said, tell you the truth. I was so mad that puck went in. So afterwards, in the, the media, obviously comes to me because I'm going to say something dumb. <laughs> yeah. I, basically, I basically said it that we were going to win the next four games. I knew we were going home. I knew we were going to win the games at home. I had a lot of confidence on our team. Then game five in the garden, that's when we had the big game. We won seven to two. I think I got four goals that game. And that was, that was like, you know, that was when we kind of took off. And it was, you know, I, I didn't really – I knew we could – I knew we were going to beat them, but – you know, you don't, you don't always get lucky. Sometimes you get lucky when you say things like that. But I was, uh, I was out of being so mad. That's basically why I said it. Hey, talk. Uh, the legendary part about you, and everybody knows hockey players are tough. 
but right off the bat you suffer a broken jaw and I guess most people would have been out in traction for four months not you um, tell us about that and 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 were you advised not to play you came right back and played never missed a game yeah Craig Patrick I love Craig Patrick I remember a week after you know I, it was uh, you know broken jaw and I went in his office and he sat down and he goes you know I you know we, we recommend you sit out for four or five you know six, whatever it was I can like a month or six weeks whatever and at that time my mom flew in and she was making me uh, all my meals in a blender and I looked at Craig and I said come on man I said you know I got a chance of a lifetime with this group and he just looked at me and you know he he knew like you know regardless uh, that what I was going to do and uh, I just put that face thing on and played so yeah, I mean, it was no way I was not going to play. I mean, if, if different team, different circumstances, maybe not that team because that, that was my only chance. And, uh, you know, that was something uh, that it, I was definitely going to play. Hey, Rick, speaking of the Flyers, uh, you know, they dominated the Penguins in the 80s. But I heard a great story about Dave Brown. Can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah, uh, we were playing – and uh, Kevin was there part of it. We're, we, the, when things started to change a little bit, I remember uh, Pittsburgh came in there and uh, they were killing us. I think it was like, I don't know, six or seven, one or something. And it was in the third period. I remember uh, Dave Brown skated to the Penguin bench and he, he looked at, he, he went up to Kevin. And I think Kevin, uh -huh. Kevin had two or three goals and he goes, uh, you guys score another goal. I'm going to knock somebody's head off or something though, to that effect. And he was the toughest guy in the league. And I remember Kevin looked at him and just puts his hand and goes, what do you want me to do? Muriel's giving me tap-ins. Yeah. And he goes, I don't <laughs> care. Miss. And uh, uh, I think the score ended up 7-1. Yeah, I don't think they scored There again. wasn't many more goals scored, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have anybody on that team that could handle him. But I, I basically said to my Isaiah Brownie, hey, you could be putting the goals I'm putting in. You put my shirt on, you could bang that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. When we continue with Living Room Sports, presented by Armina Stone, both these guys had a chance to play with the best in the game. Mario Lemieux, what was that like? You'll find out next. <laughs>